Shalom, family. Shalom. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Peace and blessings to all. Hallelujah. Welcome to the book room. Welcome to the book room for our reading today. Uh, we're going to continue reading our black history. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that's bright. That's so bright. Let's see if this changes. Yeah, that changes. It gives it a little more tone to it. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shad, the Rock of the Father, and the Son. You can't have one without the other because they're one. We would like to welcome everyone to the book room this afternoon on the first day of the week. Koti Baya, good to see you. Koti Bataya, uh, uh, good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Our moderators in the room are ready to go to work. Hallelujah. But we're just going to read today. So, uh, uh, and we are here by way of uh, Facebook and by way of uh, StreamYard. I'm uh, StreamYard, but <coughs> so I'm streaming the plat, plat, platform, but excuse me, but um, uh, 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 YouTube, yeah, Facebook and YouTube. And we are going to uh, pick up on our reading from this particular book, The 13 Black Colonies uh, by Lee Cummins. And uh, we're going to pick up at chapter 4 on page 47. Chapter 4 on page 47. So we're going to give a couple of minutes, just give a few more people time to come in. They pick up on this. They get, they get the notification and they want to come in. So we will just give it a couple of minutes. I sip on my healthy tea. This is, uh, I think it's ginger. And it's thyme, thyme, ginger, mint, and what's the third one? Thyme, ginger, no, thyme, thyme. Mint and um, I can't remember the name. Of them. <laughs> but I added the ginger in. I mean, yeah, just trying to stay up. I, I, I feel a little snipple coming on. I try to catch it before it catches me. Hallelujah. All praises. So I pray everyone's having a Baruch day. Yeah. Everyone is being blessed and, and, and enjoying this first day of the week according to the Gregorian calendar. You know, but, uh, we do uh, uh, thank the Most High. We just came out of our Shabbat Sabbath, uh, seventh day Sabbath, and uh, had a wonderful day on yesterday and pray everyone else did as well. Hallelujah. We are definitely excited about reading this uh, history, this research uh, done by uh, Professor Lee Cummins. And we'll be back uh, to continue reading from Babylon to Timbuktu as well. Uh, both of these uh, research uh, 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 writings are, 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 are very, very uh, encouraging you know, and informative. Uh, and as I always say that we thank the most high for those who he uh, anointed and, and, and gave the, that, that zeal and desire to, to seek out and search out deep truths, hallelujah. Because so much has been hidden, so much has been hidden and we as a people, because we don't know that, uh, we tend not to even want to hear this type of information because we just feel like it's, you know, they, 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 they came up with the word conspiracy theory purposely. Uh, it was by design to, to, to uh, sway people in another direction that they would uh, uh, be skeptical of any truth that someone would try to bring out Oh, this is cons conspiracy theory, conspiracy, you're a conspiracy theorist, you know. Um, but what that does, it keeps people in the dark. 
because they refused to have an ear to hear. And the scripture says he didn't have an ear to hear. Let him hear what the spirit, what the Ruach is saying to the people, to the assembly, to the church, whatever you want to call it. But if you can't hear what the spirit of God is saying, then you can't possibly understand what's going on in the earth or receive the promises of Yah that he has promised through his word because you don't have any to hear. So um, we're not going to prolong the time. We're just going to keep on reading. Um, we're going to get into this reading. So, Father, we thank you for another day in the book room just to um, touch on some of the history that's been uncovered about these scholars that we uh, true, uh, uh, we do honor and respect uh, 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 in their perspective uh, 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 contributions to society to and to us, to our nation as a people uh, who have been lost for so many years. So we thank you, Abba, for the knowledge of the truth that's coming out and we ask that you would uh, open our hearts and minds to receive the truth and come out of the indoctrination and the lies that we've been uh, uh, conformative to for so long. But now it's time that we be set free for he who the sun sets free is free indeed. This is our prayer. We pray in the name of your son, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, hallelujah. And it is so. All right, we're going to start. We're not going to go over the time. Hallelujah. Uh, 13 black colonies, um, the original 13 colonies, they're listed here in the book. Right here. They're listed here. James Bond. Rabbi, how you doing, sir? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah, just doing some reading. Um, and uh, good to see you in the room. All, all praises, all praises. Uh, 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 huh. Give, give, give rabbis uh, our uh, our love and, and we say shalom, peace and blessings to you. All right, so uh, again, this is uh, the 13 Black Colonies by Lee Cummins. I happen to know uh, uh, Brother Lee, was studying the class with him, learning, uh, learning how to read the scales, the steel stones and things like that, and somewhat learning the language, the alphabet anyway. Um, but, um, yeah, love his writings, love his research, and we're going to just continue reading today. So we're on page 14, 47 at chapter four, 13 black columns. Again, they're listed here and I'll just read them out. It's, uh, it's Virginia, Massachusetts, Virginia, 1607, Massachusetts, 1620, New Hampshire, 1623, New York, 1625 to 1664, um, Maryland, 1632, Connecticut, 1636, Rhode Island, 1636, uh, Delaware, 1638, uh, North Carolina, 1663, uh, New Jersey, 1664, South Carolina, 1664, uh, Pennsylvania, 16, is that six? Okay, I need my glasses now. 1660, I can see it, 1681, sorry, and uh, Georgia, 1732. So those are the original, those are the original, are the, thir the original 13 colonies, all right? And so we're on page 47, it reads, we have been taught in the classroom that slavery existed in the, thir in, in the 13 colonies, but it is impossible. There was the Council of Westminster, 1102, that was uh, held in London that ruled the peninsula institutions of slavery was illegal. Hmm. The English Magna Carta of 1215 held that all men have the right to liberty. Then uh, there was a case in England in 1569 in which a Russian by the name of Cartwright was, was seen beating his slave. He was arrested and brought before the courts and tried. The court of England ruled that the institution of slavery is not recognized in England. 
the reason I have cited all these, all of these uh, cases and laws is to prep you for the truth that slavery was not recognized in England. The black Scottish steward King wrote in each charter that the laws of the colonies must be consistent with those in England. This is the reason why there was no slavery in the original 13 colonies. The first king to break the Magna Carta was King George II in 1752. Can I read that again? The first king to break the Magna Carta, which was a law in England, against slavery, which was implemented in the 13 colonies, says that the first king to break the Magna Carta was King George II, 1752. He was not a Scot. He was a black German, Belgian, uh, Benjamin, well, he was a black German, sorry. Benjamin Franklin said that the Germans were swarthy in 1751, which was 19 years years after the founding of Georgia. Interesting. The first Virginia Carter, 1607. This is an official map of New England, which later was named Jamestown. And the man in the upper left hand corner is John Smith. Try to let you all see what, you, what I can. You will do good to know that Captain John Smith was a black Scot, and I shall make that plain to you by blowing up the image on the next page. In some of the charter states, I will deal only with images, but in others, I would deal with the non-slavery language of the Carters, of the charters. I thought it prudent to uh, forewarn you concerning this perceived subject transitioning. John Smith, the Highlander. We have been saturated with the, with the, with the white image of John Smith, one of the founders of Jamestown but he was not white. It is impossible from the testimony of Boyd Dawkins and the only life portrait of Captain John Smith that he could be white. According to Professor Dawkins, the blacks were punished, were pushed into the highlands of Scotland. The surname, last name Smith belongs to the, the, the Chatton clan, the Chatton clan, C-H-A-T-T-A-N which was made up of a confederation of 26 clans, Chatton clan from Highlands of Scotland. And Smith was one of the clans, was one of the clans. On the next page, I provide you with a map of ancient Scotland that shows the Chatton clan being in the Highlands of Scotland. You can see the arrow. Uh, just if you look at where the arrow is, you'll see that's where it's pointing to, and that's where the Chapman, Chap, Chapman, Chatton clan is. All right. Ancient map of Scotland, the Chatton Smith clan. The Chatton clan was located in the Highlands of Scotland. This is the exact location that Professor Boyd Dawkins, page three, said that the blacks inhabited. He did blow that picture up here. All right. Image of Captain John Smith of the Highlander. That's just a bigger picture. Okay, this is a copy of the original map of Virginia that was drawn drawn by Simon D. Uh, Pass Passy. Uh, in 1616. This image of John Smith was copied from the original. I have showed the image down on the next few 
I've slowed the image down in the next few pages so that you can see the true color of this man. So here's, here's, here's the first one. Second one. And then here's the final, what we get in history. Now, for whatever reason, these are in black and white, so now I read. Image John Smith, engraver Williams, William Richardson, 1793. Copies from the original Simon D. Passy, 1616. This engraving of John Smith is currently being housed at the Smithsonian Institute. This is the only known portrait of John Smith. And you, can, you can't help but notice that the man is brown skinned. This will come to as no surprise to you once you realize that he was a Highlander and he was a black Scot. I have showed the image, I slowed the image down uh, even further on the next page. And we already showed you the pictures. So this one says cropped it of, of image of John Smith from page 51. Uh, Captain John Smith physically sat for this life portrait. This is a copy of the original Smithsonian uh, Institute. The Highlanders are generally uh, uh, that uh, demi, demi, diminutive, whatever that, D-I-M-I-N-U-T-I-V-E with brown complexion and almost always with black curled hair and dark eyes. Uh, uh, and and Anias, Anias, Anias of uh, of, of Cal Caledonian uh, picks and Scots by Joseph Ritson, Volume Two, uh, Edwin Ed Edinburgh, Edinburgh Ward D. Lane is just some other uh, 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 where, the, where these footnotes come from. 1828 footnote page, page seven and, tw and 27. Okay, the painting of John Smith, which you saw the pictures, matches the eyewitness account of Joseph Ritson, Professor Boyd Dawkins, page three, and Ship Manifest, pages 135, 137, 139, and the eyewitness account of John Mackey on page 187. Benjamin Franklin described the English as, as white and red. Mm. Page 86, 87, and 88. This image of John Smith does not fit the description of a white man. Who are we supposed to believe? The guy that heard the story from someone else or the guy uh, at the scene? I'm going with the guy at the scene. Virginia Charter. Now we're going to read the Virginia Charter. They read a little funny because the English is, I have to, the English, you know, the, the words are, are like kind of, kind of missing. You know, I mean, it's misspelled. And I, I, once I start reading, I think I can catch on. It says, and does therefore for us, and do therefore for us, our our highest and successors grant uh, the, and agree that this, that this, that the said uh, Sir Thomas Gates, Sir George Summers, and uh, Richard uh, uh, Hack Hacklett, Hacklett and Edward uh, Marie, Edmund Marie, Marie uh, Winfield, Adventure of, of Adventures, Adventures of and of our uh, I could go, uh, our city of London, and all such others are are are. are uh, shall shall be joined shall shall be joined unto them of uh, that colony shall be called the first colony and they shall and may begin yeah begin their their side first first plantation and and seat of their uh, first abode and habitation at the at and at a at a, at, at a place upon uh, the side coast of Virginia of America. The charter for Virginia in 1606 was called the first colony. 
and to that end and for the more speedy accomplishment of their uh of their side intended of their said intended plantation and ha uh habitation there are desirous there are desirous to uh divide themselves into two several colonies two several colonies and and companies the one consisting of uh certain uh knights knights and gentlemen magistrates and others adventures of uh adventures of our uh, city of london and elsewhere which are the which are and from time to time uh shall be joined unto them with those desires to begin their plantations and habitations in some fit and convenient place and convenient place uh between uh four and four and the thirty yeah four and the thirty and one and forty degrees of said latitude all along all along uh the coast of virginia and coast of america aforesaid and other consisting of a sunday sunday or sundry nights gentlemen merchants and other adventures of our cities of bristol and Ex exeter and of our uh town of plymouth king james tells you which cities uh, participated in the colonization of Jamestown, Bristol, Exeter, Plymouth, and Cromwell, and Cromwell were black towns in Devon. This is, this is huge because these cities are the locations of the blacks that Professor Boyd Dawkins spoke of. Second colony of Plymouth. And we do likewise for us our heritage, our heresies and successors by these present uh, grant and agree that the said Thomas Hanum, 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 Thomas Hanum, uh, Reginald uh, Raleigh Gilbert, William Parker and George uh, pa uh, Popham and all others of the town of Plymouth in the in the county of Devon, Devon, see page three, it says, here are some names of the leaders of the Virginia colony and their place of origin. Thomas Gale Cromwell, George Summers Cromwell, Richard Hacklett, Welch, Edward Marie Whit uh, Winfield, Welch, and Raleigh Gilbert Cromwell. All these men, all these men's last name placed their or origination in the Black Highlands or Scotland. And that is a fact. I have a greater witness than this. Come and see. All right. Nantucket, 1623. Uh, Trisham, Ch Trishram, Coffin founder of, yeah, Coffin. Coffin founder of Nantucket. This is this fella here. Okay. Image location, Wikipedia. So he got this picture out of Wikipedia. It's a coin. This fella with this fella's picture on it. Uh, Trish, Trish, Trish Ram Coffin. Okay, the founder of Nantucket. This coin reads, these are the first of the race to settle America and it's dated in the year 1642. This black man purchased Nantucket, small country in Massachusetts, from Thomas Mayhew, and he also owned Nantucket Island in 1660. The name Trish, Trish, Trish Ram, or Trish Ram uh, can be tracked back to Devon and Cromwell, or Cromwall, which was the location of the Black Britain and Scots. Professor Boyd Dawkins stated that the Blacks were pushed into Cromwell and Devon. Trish, Trish Ram Coffin name came, can be traced to Cromwell and Devon. This is what I call a perfect match. Trish Ram, Trish Ram Coffin, founder of Nantucket. There's another picture.
Okay, so I believe that the first people to enter Cromwell were African pygmies. This comment and others can be found on page 280 and 283 of footsteps of footsteps of, of vanished race in Cromwell. These people didn't vanish. They were massacred or deported. I have noticed in all the books that I have read that the honest scholars say these people vanished. It is a cover up to hide the fact that the black Scots migrated and founded the 13 British colonies. It doesn't help when the, when the, when the victor has, to, has two of the greatest weapons in the world, a pencil and an eraser. Wow, it's deep. They just changed history. pretty much killed the people off and changed history. King James, okay, New York Charter, 1664. King James, the Duke of York, Duke of Albany, King of Scotland and England, 1664, National Portrait Gallery. Picture. Mm -hmm. Wow. This King James of Duke, the Duke of New York, depicts himself, him as a black Scottish king. He was named after King James VI of Scotland. The Duke of, of York was granted these lands by his brother, King Charles II, New York. New York, the land between uh, Connecticut, Delaware, Long Island, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, one half of Maine. This is the reason the book was titled The 13 Colonies because based on the research, the original founders were four black Scottish kings and one black German king. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. All right. Again, I suggest he just cropped the pictures a little bigger. It's a little bigger. King James II as the Duke of York, 1864, the Highlander. Image location, National Portrait Gallery of London. So, so we got the image. The colonization of New York was to be split between the Dutch, French, and the English. The French colonized New York in 1524, and the Dutch founded New York in 1626. The English took control of New York in, the, in 1664, and in that year, there was a population of 7,000 to 8,000 inhabitants. Let's see who the British sent to colonize New York. Hmm. The 13 Colonies, Part 1, uh, Arthur, Arthur Helen and uh, uh, Anisley Smith. Okay. So this is somebody else's writing, right? In the year 1664, there were 7,000 Dutchmen besides the real Dutch. Uh, Pru 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 Prussians, 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 Bohemians, French, Swedes, Norwegians, Danes, and 5,000 English, including Scots, Welsh, and Irish. Can I prove that these people were black? Yes, I can. See Benjamin Franklin's essay, America as a Land of Opportunity, 1751. That's a resource. All right. Benjamin Franklin. Why should the why should the palace why should the Palestine Moors be suffered to swarm into our settlement? This has been the words of Benjamin Franklin. Why should the Palestine and Moors be suffered to swarm in our settlements. They will never adopt our customs any more than they can obtain our complexion. All Africa, Asia, America are swarthy black, Russia, Russia, black, are swarthy or black. Russia, Italy, Spain, France, Swede, and Germans are black. The principal whites are made up of the Saxon and 
uh, and the English. The Scots, Welsh, and Irish are not Saxons or English. When Benjamin Franklin writes this essay in 1751, the black German king, George II, is sitting on the throne of England. Mm -mm -mm. German King George III, Science Museum uh, in the UK, and we got George, I don't know what that says, okay. But anyway, German King George III of England. Here's some more pictures. And these fellows look a little different on there. That's I think that's George Washington over there on the, on the other side by himself. I didn't show you the picture. Okay. Uh, Benjamin Franklin said that Germans were suave, and he did not lie. The black German king, King George, was a found was the founder of Georgia, and the other twelve colonies were founded by the Black Stuart Highlander kings. New Plymouth Charter, sixteen twenty nine, issued by King James the Sixth of Scotland. So King James the Sixth, this is the King James that had the Bible translated into English, that gave us our King James version. Okay, in all and every or any, in all and every or any of which said said great and general courts, uh, so, uh, some assembled, some assembled, we do for us our heresies and successors give and grant to the said governor and company and their successor that the governor or in his or in his absence of the deputy governor of the said company for the time being, and such of the assistant, assistants and freemen of the said company as, as shall be present, or the greater number of them so, so assembled, whereof the governor or deputy governor and six of the assistants at the, at, at the least to be seven shall have full power and authority to choose, nominate, and appoint such and so many others as they shall think fit, and that shall be and that shall be willing to accept the same, to be free of the said company and body, and them in, and them into the same to admit and to elect and constitute such officers as they shall think fit and thank fit and, and requisite for the ordering of managing and this dispatching of the affairs of the uh, of the uh, said governor and company and their successors and to make laws and ordinance for the good and welfare of the said company and for the government and ordering of the said a uh, said lands and plantations and the people inhabiting and to and the people inhabiting inhabiting and to inhabit it the same as, as to them from time to time should there should sh uh, shall be thought uh meet or met so as such laws and ordinances be uh, contrary to repugnant to the laws of and statutes of this our realm of england do you see that the, the the charter said that the governor should not make laws that were contrary to the English realm? Mm -hmm. And at this time, ladies and gentlemen, slavery was considered an abomination, not only to the kingdom of England, but to most of the European arenas at that time. But the time you are, the, by the time you are through reading this book, you will see that the English slave trade was to be divided between the Stuart kings and the Hanover kings. The black Stuart kings did not involve themselves in slave trade. It was the black German kings, uh, the, the Georges. I keep asking myself why. If the black Scots founded the 13 colonies, why would the Scot Scottish kings enslave their own people? The answer was simple. King George was a black German. He was not not a Scot. He had no problem enslaving black Scots since they were not his people. These are no, there, there is no mention of 
slavery in this charter, timeline 1630. This stuff is deep, 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 deep. Time is it, okay. Maryland Charter, issue 1633, issued by King Charles I of Scotland. So he's another Scot Scottish king, King Charles of Scotland. Image, is, this is Lord Baltimore, uh, location, Maryland, digital cultural heritage. You wanna go see it. He points out some things with the arrow, so we'll see what he's talking about. When you crop the image and blow it up, one can see that someone went through extraordinary lengths to lighten the image of Lord Cecil Baltimore. Look at the eyes, ears, and nose. Check the forehead, and blackness of the image is slowly disappearing. Maryland Charter continued. Uh, this says uh, seven, number seven. Okay, and for as much as we have above made and ordained uh, the aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore, the true Lord and proprietary, proprietary of the whole province aforesaid. Now, I um, know ye therefore further that we, we, uh, we forge we for, F -O -R, yeah, I guess forge our heirs and successors. Uh, do grant unto the said now barren in whose fidelity, uh, prudence, justice, and providence, uh, circumspection of, of mind, we, we uh, repose the greatest uh, confidence and to, his, and to his heirs for the good and happy government of the said providence free, full, and absolute power by the tenor of, of these um, of these presents uh, to ordain, make, and elect and act laws of, of what kind soever, according to their sound discretion, discretion whether related to the public state or the, or the said providence or the private uh, you. Uh, the private utility of individuals, of and of and of and with the uh, advice, uh, assent, assert, uh, and approbation to the free man, the free men, sorry, of the same province, or the greater part of them, or their uh, delegates or deputies. Whom we will, we will shall be, who we will shall be called together for the farming, for the framing of laws, when as when as often as needs shall require by the aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore and his heirs and in and in the form which shall seem best to him or them, and the same to public under the seal of the aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore and his heirs and duly uh, and, and duly to execute the same upon all persons for the time being within the aforesaid providence and the limits thereof are under his or their governmental government and power in sailing toward Maryland or thence returning outward bound either into England or elsewhere whether to any other part of our or any foreign dominion who, wheresoever established by the imposition of, of fines, imprisonment, and other punishment whatsoever, even if it be necessary and the quality, the quality of the, the offense required. It. My, my probation, I mean, by probation of member or life by him, uh, uh, the aforesaid now Baron of Baltimore and his heirs are by his by his or uh, or their deputy lieutenant judges justice magistrates officers and ministers to be constituted and appointed according to the tenor and true intent 
of these presents and to constitute and ordain judges, justice, magistrates, and officers of what kind, for what cause, and with what power soever within the land and in that land and the sea of those parts and in such form <coughs> as to as to said, let me get some drink, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and for such and with and with power so ever within the land and sea, okay, I'm just go back over that. Those parts and in such as uh to the said uh, now baron of Baltimore or his heirs shall seem most fitting. And also remit, I mean remit, release, pardon, and abolish all crimes and offenses whatsoever against such laws, whether before or after judgments passed, and to do all and singular other things belonging to the complexion of justice, the completion of justice, and the court and to court uh 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 pay Praetorian, Praetorian uh, ju ju judication, ju judications, and tribunal and tribunal uh, ju judicial forms and 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 modes of proceeding. Although express mention thereof, thereof in these present uh, to be made and by judge by judges by them delegated uh, toward toward process hold hold please and determine in those in those courts uh, uh pr pr praetorian uh ju judicator judicial judicatories uh and and again tribunal uh in all actions suits causes and matters whatsoever as well criminal as personal a uh, real and mixed and uh praetorian which said laws so to be published as above said, we will enjoin change or command to be most absolute and firm in law and to keep in those parts by all the subjects uh, and lead and, and lied, uh, lead men of us, our heirs, our successors, so far as they concern them and to be inviolable, inviolable, or involubly observed under the uh, penalties therein expressed or to be expressed. Listen to the note. Some nevertheless that the laws aforesaid be consonant to reason and be not uh, repugnant or contrary, but so far as conveniently may, may be agreeable to the law, suitable custom and rights of this our king them in England. There is no mention of slavery in Maryland Charter. Time, timeline 1633. No mention of slavery. Hallelujah. A few more minutes, family. We might get through another part here. The Rhode Island Charter, issue 1636, issued by King Charles II of Scotland. Okay. Image location, uh, charter of uh, Go uh, Goose Guernsey, Guernsey, G U E R N S E Y, Tim uh, Tim Thornton, twenty oh four. Okay. Rhode Island was called the Red Island based on the translation of Paleo Hebrew R or Ra or H, or Ha, and O equals the uh, equals d d d equals the and e equals ha you know anything about the paleo all right interpreted into english it would spell read read or read or e e d e or read or e d uh the island was called the red island after zara the son of judah there it goes back again so we for those that had, didn't 
get, wasn't with us in the beginning reading, he actually traced uh, Zorah all the way back to Judah. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, and so who was, the, who was the scarlet thread? Who had the scarlet thread wrapped around his wrist? Okay. If you have some time, you should read Genesis chapter 38, 24 to 30, concerning the birth of Zara and the, the scarlet thread placed on his wrist at birth. When Joshua and Joshua 2, 7 and 21. Now, what I usually do is go and read it, but I don't have it set up. Let me see if I can get it real quick. I think I have this thing on. No, I got to wait for that to set up. But anyway, I'll finish reading and I'll go back and read the scriptures. Okay. So, um, sent two spies to spy out the land of Jericho. They told Rahab the harlot uh, to place a scarlet thread in her, her window uh, for protection. And she did. The Road Red Island Charter was issued uh, to Dr. John Clark. I tried desperately to find an image of Mr. Clark, but I came up empty. There is no mention of slavery in Rhode Island, in Rhode Island, in Rhode Island Charter, timeline 1636. Okay, I want to read that scripture real quick, those two scriptures. So we got, um, we got Genesis 38, uh, 24 to 30. And it came to pass about three months after that it was told Judah saying Tamar, uh, thy daughter-in-law, have played the harlot also, and also behold, she is with child by whoredom. And Judah was, and Judas, and Judah said, Bring her forth and let let her be burnt. And when she was brought forth, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man who these are am I with child. And she said, discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet, uh, the bracelet, and the staff. And Judah acknowledged them and said, she have been more righteous than I, because that I gave her not to Selah, my son, and he knew her again no more. And it came to pass in the time of her travail, that she that that behold twins were in her womb and it came to pass when she traveled that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying this came out first mm -mm -mm. that's it right to 28 to 30 okay two more verses and it says, and it came to pass as he drew back his hand and behold, his brother came out and she said, how has thou broken forth? This breach uh, be upon thee, be, be, therefore his name was called uh, Perez. Verse 30, and afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand and his name was called Zora. Now, Lee has traced Zorro, he's traced King James the sixth all the way back to Zorro. King James the sixth, according to his study and research, was a Jacobite, was a descendant of the tribe of Judah. We got folks saying that he was, you know, he was wicked, he was white, he was, he was a homosexual, all this crazy stuff. But this research is saying something different. All right. Oh, then the other, the other scripture was Joshua. Uh, 2, 17 to 21. Let's read that real quick. Oops, 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 sorry, Ben. Look at it again. Joshua, okay. Joshua 2, 17 to 21. 17 to 21. And it reads, And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine, thine oath which thou hast made us to swear, us swear. Behold, when when we come into the land, thou, thou shalt bring this line of scarlet thread in the window. Bind this line, this line in the window, which thou which thou doest let down. Uh, by, which thou doest let 
let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the streets, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless of what of whosoever shall be be with thee in the house. His blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon them. He says, if thou, but it says, and if thou utter this our business, when we will be quit, uh, quit of, of thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. And, and he said, and she said, according to your words, so be it. And she, and she, she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window. It was that supposed to read to what, 21? That was it, all right. Okay, so we see that connection. Okay, the Connecticut Charter, and we're gonna stop after this, it's getting close to this, there we go. The Connecticut Charter, and it says here, Charter, uh, blah, 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 His Majesty, I can't, okay, Charles II. Okay, issued by King Charles I of Scotland. And further of our, and further of our, this is the Connecticut Charter, and further, uh, and further of, of our more ample, uh, ample grace, uh, certain knowledge and, and mere, and, and, and mere uh, making, uh, we have given and granted, and by these presents for, 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 for us, our, our heirs and successors, uh, ULME, I don't know what that means. Um, give, give and grant unto unto the said governor and company of of the, the English colony of Connecticut mm, in New England in America, and to every inhabit inhabitant there, and to every person and persons trading thither, and to every such person and persons as are uh, such be free of the said colony, full power and authority from time to time and attention or, or, or attend at, at times or at all times or at all times uh, hereafter to take ship, trade, uh, transport and carry away for and towards uh, the plant, the plantation and define and the de and defense of said colony such of our our loving subjects and and strangers as shall as shall or will willingly accompany them in and to their uh, said colony and plantation except such persons or persons uh are are as or shall be therein uh re restrained by by us our hair our heirs or successors and and allow and alone uh and allow to ship uh and transport or, or loose to ship and transport uh all and all manner of goods chattels uh merchandises and other things whatsoever they are shall be useful or necessary for inhabitants and he's and and the said colony and may lawfully be transported thither. Never, nevertheless, not to be discharged of payment to us, our Harris, our, our hires and successors and, and duties, uh, customs and subsidies, subsidies uh, which are, ought to be paid, uh, payable to uh, the same. Pause. The key phrase in this Connecticut Charter is, the stranger that willingly accompanies the colonists. The king said willingly, not enslaved. Good point, continue. And for the directing, ruling, and disposing of all other matters and things whereby by our said people, inhabitants there may be so religiously, uh, peaceably and civilly governed as their good life and orderly conversation may win, may win, and invite the natives, listen, of the country, 
country to the knowledge and obedience of the of the only a one your only true God and Savior of mankind and the Christian faith, which in our royal in, 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 intentions, in our royal intentions and the adventures free profession in, 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 in only and principle end of this uh, plantation. Pause. The section states that the principal reason for giving the Royal Charter to the Connecticut colony is that they would extend the kingdom of God to the indigenous people, not slavery. Continue. What time is it? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna stop in four minutes. And to take or surprise by all ways and means whatsoever all and every such person and persons with uh, their ships among a more ammunition and armor and ammunition other goods of such as shall in such hostile manner invade or attack uh, the defending of the said plantation or the hurt of the said company and inhabitants the 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 and upon just cause to invade and destroy the natives or other enemies of the said colony. Pause. The king is implicit in his description of the use of deadly force, but nowhere does he state that the colonists are to invade, destroy, and enslave. Right. This is a game changer. Good stuff. I'm a I'm going to read this, this last part here and we'll be done. To have and to hold the same unto the said governor and company, their successor and assigns, assigns for, assignees forever upon trust and for the, for the use and benefit of themselves and their, and their associates. Free men are the said colony. Their, 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 their hires and assignees to be Hold, to be holding of us, our heritage, our hires and successors as our minor of East Greenwich, as, as our manner of East Greenwich in free and common skirt, uh, so, 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 so cage and not in, in, in uh, cap, capital or cap, cap, can't read it, or no, or nights, uh, or by night service um yamblin yamblin i don't know what that is and uh pain pain painage therefore to uh, to to us our heirs and successors only the fifth part of all the ore or of gold and silver which uh from time to time and at all times hereafter shall be their their gotten had uh, or obtained um, in, in lieu of all service, duties, and demands whatsoever to be to us, our heirs and successes, therefore, are they are there are there they're out rendered, made, or paid. I guess I'm a confusing. Okay, pause. The charter makes provision for the colony. So he explains them. The charter makes provision for the colony to pay the king one-fifth of the gold or ore and silver that is to be extracted from the earth, but he never mentions revenue from the North Atlantic slave trade, and this is an important omission. What we have here are the facts, ladies and gentlemen. The Black Steward Highlanders are not involved in the slave trade per the laws of England. This explains the actions of King Charles I when he was trying to raise an army to defend the three kingdoms against Oliver Cromwell. His wife, Queen uh, Henrietta Maria of France, went all over England pawning, pawning, uh, pawning her jewelry to raise money uh, for arms and soldiers, but they never received money from the sale of humans. These original charters illuminate the fact that the black 
Europeans were interested in regions and extraction of precious metals. In the beginning of this charter, I inform you that in some of the states, I would deal with the color of the images of the images and in the other states, I would deal with the non-slavery wording of the charter. Work with me on this. That's it for today, family. Thank you for joining us in our read, Black History Read, from the book, The 13 Black Colonies by Lee Cummings. And we're going, we, um, we just, we're going, into, this is chapter, because we're still in the same chapter. It just says continue, yeah. Yeah, these, these, these just continue. Um, we're on page 73. If this is a challenge, let's see if there's a chapter on this. It's just, I mean, I think he just continues. He doesn't really, it's not, it's not, okay. Yeah, so when this stops here, yeah, he doesn't have chapters on here. So we're on page 73, Royal Charter of Carolina. That's where we'll start uh, tomorrow when we come back for the next read. The Royal Charter of Carolina, issued by King Charles II of Scotland, the Royal Charter of Carolina, 1663. And that's what we'll be on tomorrow. All right, family. All right. Thank you for being in the book room. Um, it's good to see everyone. Uh, 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 Rabbi Bai, so good to see you. And we you know our prayers are with you guys over there in, uh, 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 in Ghana. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we know you're over there paving the way. Hallelujah. Because I surely want to get over there. Hallelujah. So keep up the good work. And if you all don't know on here that uh, Let's Talk Torah, you know, if you just join, go on Facebook and look up Let's Talk Torah, type that in and you will get some awesome Torah teaching from Rabbi and Rabbis uh, Byers. Hallelujah. We also have ministry with Rabbi too. Is pastoring in Winston, in, uh, 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 Winston Salem, North Carolina, where they left for work, and they have moved on to continue to work in Ghana and our homeland. Hallelujah! All praises. So keep them in your prayers. Remember, let's talk Torah. Also remember, Karen in Ghana. Keep up with these. Uh, these are our people who have left the states and have relocated over into the motherland. Hallelujah! And doing great work. Hallelujah! Carrying this truth. Hallelujah, and teaching Torah. All right, thank you, family. With that being said, we want to say to you all, uh, we love you, and uh, Abba, we thank you for the read. We thank you for the, the we thank you for the researchers, uh, uh, Lee Cummins, and, and any 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 information that we have where you have given uh, our people the mind to search out the truth. Hallelujah, so that we can be more aware uh, and 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 of who we are and whose we are. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Abba, uh, at this time, and we ask that you continue to be with us wherever we are on the earth. To the 12 tribes, we say, Kwam Yashirah. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shah, the Father, and the Son. Can't have one without the other because they're one. Shalom, family. Peace and blessings to all. As always, be at peace. Hold on. We'll be back tonight. We'll be back tonight uh, at 7 for a teaching for a teaching for a precept teaching so if you're available tonight at seven please join us all praises <laughs>